Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A school principal issues an apology over a guest speaker's message, which, which may have upset students at an assembly about diversity. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. Good evening, everybody. I'm Karen Drew in for Devin Skillian tonight. Which viewpoints are appropriate to share with students at a school assembly? That's the question being asked tonight after a controversial set of speeches by a Palestinian American activist. Some people feel Huweda Araf went too far in labeling Israel an oppressor of Palestinians, a view shared by the human rights group Amnesty International. Adding to the controversy, Araf's past association with groups advocating violent resistance. Sean Lay is live in Bloomfield Township tonight, where local rabbis and school leaders have been meeting about this. Sean. We have every angle of this covered for you. You're right, rabbis, right now inside with the principal meeting about the messenger here, wondering exactly what the message was inside of that school. However, you're right. School is apologizing, sending me this statement during the assembly. This happened during the assembly. One of the external guest speakers went outside our agreed upon parameters and discussed their personal political perspectives. This caused harm to many of our students. We apologize and are deeply regretful that our students, staff, and community were negatively impacted. Here's how local Jewish leaders are reacting tonight. There was no apology. A group of rabbis, including Jewish Community Relations Council Director Rabbi Asher Lopatin, meeting at this hour with the principal of Bloomfield Hills High School, Lawrence Strotter. The rabbis, some parents and students, demanding an apology after the school allowed Hawaida Araf to hold four assemblies to speak to students Tuesday. Araf is an activist and is known for her organization's support for Palestinians and the need for, quote, violent resistance against Israelis. This letter from the principal went out to families. He did not name Araf or detail what she said. The principal blamed the speaker for deviating from what she agreed to talk about. Quote, the speaker discussed the conflict in Gaza from their own personal, political perspective and experience. This discussion was outside of the parameters of the assembly and was addressed by the high school administration immediately after the speaker left the stage. They didn't mention anything about Jews being hurt. They didn't mention anything about uh, uh, Israel uh, being delegitimized by something like apartheid. They didn't mention that. And they also didn't mention that once we told her not to speak about this, she spoke about it again. The children felt uncomfortable. They felt hurt. They felt attacked by statements of a speaker that was brought into the school for diversity training. When that speaker starts spewing the same kind of vicious as hurtful rhetoric against so many of the students, is she not stopped from speaking at all? They just let her continue speaking. And then she went on again and spoke about it. All right, so I reached out to Hawaii Araf, of course, to get her point of view on all this. She just sent me a long message. We're posting it to clickondetroit.com. In part, she says, my message addressed the harms caused by racism, discrimination, denying others the same rights that you seek for yourself, rights that all people deserve. To the extent that anyone was upset to hear about what is happening to Palestinians, they should be. But it seems to me that their problem is with the policies of the state of Israel, not with me. Also, rabbis we spoke with today said they're more than happy to all also take part in these discussions of diversity. Waiting for an invitation here. We're live tonight. Sean Lane, Local 4, back to you. Hey, Sean, we appreciate it. Well, it has become all too common for us in the southeast of Michigan, spending days, maybe even a week or more, without power after severe weather. Frustrated lawmakers called on executives today to explain why this is. But as Local 4 business editor Rob Maloney tells us, the answers given today were less than satisfied. So many want to know precisely why it is that things change so slowly in this process. And as best we can tell from today's hearing, it's because the MPSC is in charge of the utilities in terms of changing things, and that has been very slow. No escaping blame in this room. Consumers Powers Christopher Laird apologizing. We're truly sorry. We will learn from this as we go forward. DTE President and Chief Operating Officer Trevor Lauer doing the same. I am very sorry for the outages that we had. We represent the hardship that it caused on our customers. MPSC Commissioner Catherine Peretic telling legislators. Myself and my fellow commissioners, Chair Scripps and Commissioner Phillips, find the current state of electric reliability in far too many areas in Michigan 
to be unacceptable. As do thousands of customers who suffered over the past month, considering both utilities have both enjoyed rate increases eight of the past 10 years, legislators wonder where the money went and wound up frustrated when the answer to what's going on kept returning to regulations tying everyone's hands, the utilities touting slow to emerge future plans. One of the things both companies say they can and need to do is to automate the grid, making it possible through technology to redirect power around outages. But it requires more money and time. We are requiring our standards to be updated like stronger poles, utilizing automation where we can switch our customers over very quickly in less than a minute to an alternate power source. Where we really struggle is the duration Automation is the key to do that. There are larger issues that the legislature says it wants to attack, and one of those would be what they call performance-based rate schedules. That requires a lot of work. It's going to take time, but they already committed in the meeting today to try and get a working group going on that. In Lansing, Rod Maloney, Local 4. The Michigan Public Safety Commission says because of last year's storms, it has a number of rule changes coming in the next week, including requiring utilities to work better and faster to restore power and increase billing credits after storms to much higher rates. A disappointing decision involving the future of Selfridge Air National Guard Base in Harrison Township. It was hoped Selfridge would be chosen as the site of a new F-35 training center, but today the Air Force confirmed a base in Arkansas was chosen instead. That's because the Arkansas base had previously hosted similar aircraft, meaning minimal renovation and construction would be needed. Despite the setback, lawmakers like Senator Gary Peters and Representative John James are promising to keep fighting to secure the future of Selfridge. Two Michigan cities are about to engage in some friendly competition in order to help other countries devastated by natural disaster. Ticket sales from a charity basketball showdown between Hamtramck and Dearborn are going to Syria, Turkey and Yemen. Megan Woods joins us live with how this is all coming together and the difference these communities are looking to make. Megan. That's right, Kimberly. So the game is Friday, but today and tomorrow they're doing all they can to get the word out. They want to raise $10,000, but it's not all about the money. They also want to raise awareness and send a message. You know, one person struggles, we all struggle, and this is one thing that we can do to help uplift people all around the world. Last year, there was a Hamtramck versus Dearborn game that raised $8,000 to go to Yemen. They show us videos of like the people when they're receiving like food or they're receiving their housing. <laughs> they're in tears. They're in tears. Like the people are in tears. Uh, they appreciate it so much. And honestly, there's so many people that need help out there. Uh, this is just like a small dent into what really needs to happen. After an earthquake struck parts of Turkey and Syria, killing more than 52,000 people, organizers like Omar Thabit says this year they want to help those countries too. Dearborn Mayor Abdullah Hamoud says it just makes sense. You know, it's no secret that Dearborn and Hamtramck host global communities. A lot of immigrants and refugees uh, reside within our cities. It's what makes us so beautiful. I, I am a son of immigrants. The Hamtramck mayor is an immigrant himself. So this Friday, Hamtramck and Dearborn are playing again, this time at Dearborn High School. And yes, there will be some trash talking. I'm excited for Friday because we have to make a statement it's on our home turf. We lost last year. But no matter who wins, everyone leaves knowing they made a difference. We have, you know, people that live in those communities that are from those countries, so it just means a lot even more. But you don't even have to be from that country to understand that to help out those countries in need. So again, that game is Friday at Dearborn High School at 6. You can get tickets at the door. That's the only way you can get tickets. And the players, they're from a, a 35 and up league. And Mayor Hamoud, he's playing for Team Dearborn. And then Halal Food Junkie, a social media influencer, is playing for Team Hamtramck. So we'll have that info on ClickOnDetroit.com. Reporting live, Megan Woods, Local 4. Like you said, Megan, I'm sure a lot of trash talking, but no losers here. Everybody wins because it's for such a good cause. We appreciate your report tonight. Let's send it over to Brandon now as we take a look at our forecast for the evening and tomorrow. Uh, enjoyable day today, though, for sure. That's right. Brightest all week today. Now, warmest of the week will be tomorrow. Just have a little more cloud cover coming in, but it's middle 40s and 10 to 15 degrees warmer than we were at 6.08 p.m. Tuesday. So it's noticeably warmer do have a little bit of a southwest breeze so the middle 40s feel more like 
40 when you factor in just a little bit of a breeze. Temps will barely be falling through the 40s into the upper 30s later tonight if you're going to be out and about. Now, coming up, we're tracking a shot at 50 degrees a couple of times in the seven day, but also uh, a little bit of wet weather coming in late tomorrow and say it ain't weekend snow. We'll take a closer look at that. In the meantime, if you are heading out now or at any time, everything you need to know weather wise is right on your forewarn weather app. 100% free. Just search WDIV in your app store.